The Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. God has been gracious to us. He has given us another day. He's given us another opportunity and we rejoice in it. We're glad to come your way with another episode of the Health Arena. There's a time that we seek to bring you insights from God's word to help us to be able to live our lives better. With understanding, we can make better choices. We have something special and unique in store for you today. My name is Helen Tete and I'll be your host. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, I'll introduce our topic and our guest for today. Thank you for staying with us. Today promises to be exciting and it's a new dimension. We are looking at things that happen in scripture and how we can apply it to our health. And so today we are looking at the Daniel diet. To do this with us is one of our guests, our favorite guests on the health arena. It's always a joy to have him here. And he's in the person of Pastor Steve Naughty. Pastor you. Steve is a public health practitioner. He's a dietitian. He's a minister of the gospel at the Equipus Church. He's also married with three lovely children. So, from your line of mm. practice, mm. I've had the opportunity of following you for mm. some time. Yeah. I realize that when you do the dieting thing, mm. it's different. Yeah. And I've seen people do it. Results, mm. um, yeah. it works for a while. Mm. After a while, they do mm. it differently. Mm. What, what is your secret? <laughs> Interesting question. Well, um... Thanks so much for having me again, and um, good evening to our viewers. Um, I think for me, I probably not call it a secret, but I think it's been a journey and that I've come to appreciate a few things which has been very helpful in my practice. Um, but also my background as a pastor really did play a key role in influencing that understanding and also the results that started coming out because uh, I practiced for over seven years, almost eight years. But around that seven, eight year dimension, I got very interested in uh, uh, biblical studies and also some other things. Then I came back into the consulting room and started putting some things in place. One, I, I'm a researcher also, so I've been really looking at the outcomes in my patient's life. One of the things I realized that for most people, because the kind of work I do, we are looking at lifestyle change in people, I found out something which is quite interesting, that those who get significant results in the changes they make that ultimately impact on their health, there's always a fake dimension that comes with it. I didn't learn that when I was really in school, where it didn't come out really much, but on my journey, I look at those whether from uh, managing uh, cardiovascular diseases or to come into weight management mm. or whatever situation. I really feel that when you dial home the faith dimension married with the reality of the evidence-based uh, procedures, people do well. So then I realized that there is one part is it God is interested in this dimension and men actually also wow. do better when they see God in that dimension. So that their journey for better health outcome should be guarded or underpinned by some recognition of their faith, their faith element. So our faith then gives us an advantage in what exactly. we do. And in fact, then later I went back to the evidence to look at what is available in the data. There are people who have faith some way, somehow, they do better, even in recovery than others. 
even in my, my own personal experience in my diet, this thing, I, I may not say that based on the science, but from my own journey, I realized that people who approach this diet, this thing from a faith perspective, do that from a place of conviction and their consistency is much more assured than people who just want to do it because of a health reason. Wow, so you're a person of faith hear it from the expert himself mm. that when you're taking this journey in your health seeking to improve your health and do things with your health once you approach it from the faith dimension the outcomes are surely significant yeah. and they are different yeah and so today do you know why one of the things i realized is that faith strikes people at their inner core so you cannot make people change from the outside until you connect to the change in their inside. So whenever you resonate with that aspect of those people, they are willing or they see it much easier to see the, start, the change that they require. So there we go. We're picking it again from the angle of faith. And we're looking at Daniel chapter 1. And I'll read selected parts of the scripture. We're looking at what happened to Daniel and his friends as King Nebuchadnezzar carried them over to Babylon? Mm -hmm. And so starting from Daniel chapter 1 and verse 4. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. Strong, mm -hmm. healthy, healthy good-looking good young men, he said. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning. Mm -hmm are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are situated to serve in the royal palace. Mm. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years, three years daily ration of food and mm. wine from the king's kitchen and when they would enter and then they would enter the royal service and so i jump to verse 8 mm -hmm. but daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king yeah. he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods mm -hmm. Now, God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. But he responded, I'm afraid of my lord, the king, who has ordered that you eat this food and mm. wine. Mm. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youth your age, I am afraid the king will have me beheaded. I'm jumping to verse 12. But Daniel said, please. Test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetable and water. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. Verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. So, Pastor Steve, we've looked at this scripture. Yeah. And we just want to take this opportunity for you to throw more light and the lessons that we can learn from the scripture as mm -hmm. people of faith. Well, that's, that's, that's great. I think Daniel's story is, for me, a, a very important story. And it speaks volumes to everyone, whether you are young or you are old. I think there are five main points I want us to unpack. But right. before that, a bit of background will help. But you should know Daniel came from Jerusalem, a young guy, around 16 years, 15 years of age, taken from his homeland and brought into a foreign nation. Mm -hmm. uh, they were selected to be served in the king's palace. This is a guy who, you a foreigner, kind of not just a foreigner, a captive of war. 
You've been favored to be in the king's palace. In fact, you have a lot to do to, in, to kind of impress the people, they blend in and also win kind of uh, acceptance. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of things for which you would have expected that Daniel would have told a certain line. But Daniel tells us or shows us how a man's decision and devotion towards God, a man's faith can shape his choices and affect his outcome in life. The other thing you realize is that Daniel is one individual in the Bible who served under four different dispensations. Yeah. He served uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he served Bethsaida, he also served um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, this particular uh, king, the, the Syrian and uh, at, he, said, he, said, he served this at the, the Cyprus also, and the Persian king. Now he served all these people, four different generations. From 16 or 17 years of age, he was consistent in his devotion to God. To somewhere past 80 years, when you look at the biblical record, how can one be devoted to God and to a healthy lifestyle for that matter, or if we are talking the context of health, for that long a time? How can you start so early that whether you are young listening to us, it's not too late to get interested in faith and your, on your determination towards a healthy outcome. And whether you are old, it's not too late, but we are talking about consistency to the long term. For 80 plus, what he started or could stand for when he was a teenager, he could sustain it to his older uh, years. The fact is that you see people start so well, whether it comes to health, spirituality, whatever, but somewhere along yeah. the line, they don't continue well or they don't end well. Daniel gives us a good example. Whether your health, your business, your career, whichever field, you can start early, you can start well, you can continue well, and you can end well. Mm -hmm. So uh, against this backdrop, I uh, want us to then consider what are the key lessons we can glean from Daniel's life. Daniel from scripture and yes, say now we need put, but now we are a branty. Now so, sad time now. Daniel ye na drink say, um, obetu no we see ho. I run in the pedia so, asum ne nyang kupon ye no. Oto aswa, um, a himfo a nine. Unko a so still na Daniel eda so e di juma. Oh, that there's something in there yeah. for for us to learn yeah. that niya ye keke niya ye suye. If you are you to me, Shasi, mm. one year down the line, you're fishing, you're here. Um, if you are your quack, no, you're saying, but you're quack. But Daniel, he was consistent, and even though he started when he was young, he continued even until when he was much older. Yeah. Wow, yeah. and see, and you need to be any dear moon, but you need to pursue our or you know. Yet to me, who said, and no daddy, oh, that's not say my year came. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I think fundamentally, Daniel teaches us before we come to your food, because before we come to your diet, your career, your health, everything, it starts first with your relationship with God and your, your devotion to Him. If that is not set well, you may hear of different diets, you try it, you have challenges. You may find good plans, good things that even God may tell you. You will find difficulty wow. in sustaining it. It starts first with God, health, whatever. I, I need you to understand that we're talking about this from the perspective of a Christian. Mm -hmm. And we start from the inside out. out. So maybe you have tried this mm -hmm. and it had failed. You came back. Check what is inside. Exactly. It, it may sound a bit controversial, it may sound hard, mm -hmm. but that is the reality, yeah. learning from the Daniel experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So even before we touch the kind of diet that he had, even before we go into the outcomes of that, the fundamental for us is his person, who he yes. is, what he believed in, and what his convictions are. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So you, you mentioned that we're going to look at five things yeah and the Daniel's first one we've looked at is the background so, and his personality yeah. so yeah his background and his personality and the fact that he was a man of devotion mm. is clear the other thing i want us to look from daniel's life well i want to call it choice 
the place of choice when it comes to health. The place of choice. Because, you know, before you could see the things that happened in Daniel's life, Daniel 1.8 fundamentally drives home a certain point. Says Daniel determined in his heart, I'm not going to defile myself with the portions of the king's meat and wine. That word determined really could also be translated, made a decision or made a choice. And that's the first thing Daniel is teaching us. In life, everything is a choice. You don't have to do anything. You must want to. Let me explain uh, this shortly. You know, if for instance I tell you, look, um, the next three months, what are the things you have? Write six things that you have to do. And all of a sudden, you go say, Charlie, I have to write this. Exam. I need to send this letter. I need to do this. Like, you have a number of things. But you know, whenever you think about things as have to, they have a form of negative impact on you. Because there's always a drive, like, Charlie, I need to keep mm -hmm. this thing. Mm -hmm. It is a need to kind of factor. But the reality is that if you don't do them, you will not die. Some of them, there are consequences. Yes, there are situations that may happen if you don't do them. But the truth is this. The world doesn't end if you don't do them. So then, what happens to us is that if you drive your life because of things you need to, you may end up just doing things because you need, you need to. to do them. But the things that you need to do not make any more change. Like the things you exercise your volition, your choice. I believe if I say make a list of six things you, you want to do in the next six months, truth is this, the feeling around those things are usually more positive. Because it's as if your body responds to the things Side you want to do. It. You want to do more than the things you have, you have to do. So when it comes to health and your health choices or your health decision, it should be something you want to not something you need. I learned this thing strongly because I got people who are pushed to my uh, consulting rooms. Yeah. This person needs to be on that. This person needs to be on that. And you try them. We try with them. You go on the journey and nothing happens. So over time, I realized if the person does not want to, you cannot do much. People that make significant changes, they come to a place in their life. It's not that I have to. Because yeah, you are afraid of the disease. You are afraid of the consequence. But what brings the change is not because you have to. True change is from the place I want to. That is the positive power that choice gives you to make the decisions that are needed. Because when you make a choice, there is a sacrifice. If you don't want to, you can't do the sacrifice. Hold your fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are looking at the Daniel diet. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue. Stay with us. Back and thank you for staying with us. Today, we are discussing the Daniel diet. This happening in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. And we're looking at specific things that happened to Daniel and the kind of diet that they did, he and his friends. And discussing this with us is Pastor Steve Naughty. Pastor, before we went on the break, we were looking at the lessons that we would learn from this. And so the first thing we talked about is his devotion. Mm. The second thing is choice. choice. And you mentioned the fact that you've seen people who want to alter the way they eat and do something about it. And if the person is not convinced themselves, if it's not a choice that they take themselves, and people bring them, but mm. they try and mm. they stop. Mm. And for me, you know, it throws a bit more light. I've, um, personally, I've tried some. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, there have been times when I've seen certain things and I've been running, I'm like, oh, this one, okay, I, I want to stop eating this one. You're saying that I didn't succeed because it didn't really come from within. Yeah. The point is true. 
So when people come to my office and I say, it's something you have to or you want to. <laughs> and uh, it will start a funny conversation from there. But trust me, whatever you want to make or whatever changes you need in your life, you need to start from something you want to. Then back to that story with, of Daniel, you could see Daniel have every, had every reason to eat the food that was brought. Those were fat meat, like choices, food, drinks. But he made a choice. He had a reason to, if you don't do it, somebody can die. You can be sacked from the whole you know, process of selection. There were consequences, but you shouldn't allow that to affect decision. No one can take the power of choice from you. from you. That's one thing you should know. And that's one of the things that God has given us as human beings. Even if God knows that hell is dangerous, he still gave you a choice to choose whether to go there or otherwise. So in life, everything is a choice. When it comes to what you eat, what you not eat, the truth is that you are eating what you are eating because, because you chose you to. Chose to eat it. Mm -hmm. Please say that one. That one, that one is really important. Yeah, yeah. You are eating what you are eating because you chose to. Choice is important. In, in Daniel's situation, you are emphasizing the fact that he was in a foreign land. Mm. He was. He had been captured. Yeah. Making it even more difficult. Yeah. Out of those that had been captured, he had also been selected. Yeah. They, they also had a target yeah. to achieve, achieve within yeah. a specific time. There are many reasons for which he would have chosen otherwise. Are, are you struggling to make the right choices? Odofonia here can say, say, what's your Daniel Nabrabwa? And can a bayer ding, I'm a Daniel. Say, or yen, or per se, or be yen. It's an say, me dekind. Na ya chio mo se nkwa efi Israel asase so ena ye jio mako Babylon. Omutu Babylon nin so no. Ye sign e pao e mranti e bi na oma ye pao mo no na Daniel e kaho. Na ye pao mo ya nfo mo anko bebi a se o hene nan kasan kasan ni fi e. Bebi a o hene duya ni fi ne. E hone e duya ni a ye de ma o mo. Mu anka obe kande. Obe kase e me mpe mi wase mo. Eh, mm. any mm. my assemble to me. But in the midst of when mm. Daniel na ope, ena uchusi niya ope. Eba we di di moa, nyane huse, nya wudi yen wudi. It's on se wana ope so be di. Assemble de Yeah, it's 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 difficult, but that's <laughs> that's 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 the truth. Because in the more practical times, you know, sometimes people come they need to make some lifestyle changes you talk to them you know oh because of my work oh, because of my schedule and now uh, uh, packing food to work will be difficult taking this thing and listen all these things are exigencies that will continue to be there what you have is the choice in your hands if you make the choice the other things align that's what people also don't know Sometimes don't keep your choice to your mind alone or your mind. Verbalize it yourself. Mm. For the next one month, for the next, I'm not eating this. I'm not taking this. I'm staying off this. Don't just keep it to your, in your, don't just keep it in your mind. Verbalize your choice. It allows the entire element of your system to come begin along. to comply, to come along. So make a choice, verbalize the choice. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to take. Yes, you have to Say, we ye will see why dream peace say, winning near and was say me ya. And my name's now on Kwao, and my name shall be team, but catch her, come up or be and say, say, if he and a queen, my ya, my dream say, sa and I do a did you me jai. Sa, a janina, me dinny time, biana, me nim say, me dinny, and woman, me jai. Ah, me what ye Arabia ya catch him says I deal with M Wame. Now so me ya na masanya besiho. It's because we see why dream pee. And maybe I will see why dream pee now yes over yeno. One country will be a odia show team, ain't it? Bibi Bapena, what to happen? I send with the tree in now. Now, so my young man just when I finish, I'll verbalize. Yeah. My, <laughs> I'll verbalize the things that I'm going to, I'm going to change very and, and very determined mm. to mm. change. Mm. And before I cut you in and went on the break, you were also talking about the fact that 
the choice we make goes with a certain sacrifice. Yeah, so that's the next point I really want us to make. Choices are the basis. You need to, cho you need to choose that this is the path I want to take. Then what you should know that inherent in every choice is a sacrifice. It, it is just a, 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 a joke to think of a choice that will not require sacrifice. Daniel made a choice. I want to take vegetables and, uh, and I don't want to take this kind of things. He, he was risking the possibility of losing favor with the king or losing favor with the custodian. He, he was risking the possibility of growing leaner than the other guys. He was risking the possibility of being seen as uh, a deviant. A deviant. Yes, uh, exactly. But then he realized that if I want to choose this, there are these consequences. So sometimes people say, oh, they want a good life. They've chosen a good life, but the good life or the good health, should I say, comes with some sacrifice. What, is, what I've realized in our generation are certain, to some extent, we are, we are accepting a certain reality to have a life without real sacrifice. Mm. It's, it's a fallacy. It's an inherent in the human architecture. It's a demand for sacrifice. There's no progress in any area of your life without a necessary sacrifice. As it is true in economics, science, whatever, it is true in your health. There always comes a place of sacrifice. So sometimes people come to my consultant room, I'm trying to give them a plan. I'm not just looking at the plan. I'm also looking at the person's readiness for the sacrifice. I realize that when people want to do things, they also understand the sacrifice implication, and they are more willing to go on the sacrifice. So for instance, you know, if you made a choice, I'm taking away sugar drinks, sugar, uh, sugar drinks, I'm taking about flour products from my diet for the next six months. That choice is important, and it's good to verbalize it. But you see, the next day you go to the fridge, and you it's see the big. drink, mm. that is where sacrifice comes in. The moment you, take, you open the fridge and you, know, you pick your bottle of water and still close the fridge without going for the sugar drink, you've sacrificed. You sacrifice. Then you go to the office. Then somebody brings you, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, all cake. those kind of things. <laughs> so for me, I'm saying don't, don't, uh, don't, don't restrict your life. Don't, uh, uh, Dr. Sima Mindi, when I mean, you want to make any progress with your diet. So if you are doing it because doctor said it, it's one side of the truth, but you never make much progress. Let it come to that place. Say, see, I dear, my senior say, I say, me say, no, I say, me, person, me, Fabio. And yes, say, doctor, Kai, and yes, say, me, so you are necessarily. I have the power of choice as a human being, and I want to exercise that power. And that's all. You don't need any reason. The reason for your decision is your choice. Then you want our health. So for me, that's the thing. Every choice comes with sacrifice. Knowing that when you make a choice, your choice will be tested through sacrifice. <laughs> when you make a choice, that choice is going to be tested through sacrifice. How do we manage with excuses? Mm. Because sometimes, um, as we listen to, as you're talking now, somebody's listening to us and the person realizes that, mm, I've not been doing it right. Okay. I know that this is the way to go. I need to do it right. Yeah. Then I determine within me that a dear we. Let me use a popular one. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the sugary drinks. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is not helpful to us. Mm -hmm. And so I decide that for the next six months, I'm not going to take any sugary drink. But I go to work. And per the nature of my work, I'm busy. So maybe in the morning I had breakfast. I'm busy and I'm on the go. I'm on the go. I'm not done. I don't even have, I didn't have the time to go for lunch. Mm. But in between, I'm feeling like I need to refuel. The easiest thing that comes around is this sugary drinks. It becomes an excuse. So I go back on my way. And when I'm dealing with it myself, I tell myself, oh, because I was so busy. But I'm really determined. How do we deal with those situations? Yeah, that's, 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 that's very important. And that sits into the bigger uh, um, 
context of what I was talking about, it will involve, it will bring, it will lead me to bring in another point here. Because you see, when you make a choice and you understand the sacrifice, what sustains you on that is your personal integrity. Oh, right. Sometimes people don't know. And if your personal integrity doesn't matter to you on little, little things, it will not come to play on bigger things in life. So I, I tell people, like, Daniel's issue with, was with food. How can food determine his devotion with God and his stature before the king? Simple, simple things like food. How, what, what, did, what did that really mean a lot? Usually people have not come to see what you eat, what you feed, tells a lot about you. Mm. And that's the reality when it comes to this thing. And the bigger picture is this. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. So it's not about just eating and not eating. Whatever you begin to eat, you are making a choice. You just want to make sure that what you are doing is the choice you are actually making. And you are having the outcome you need. So here's the thing. Back to the point about personal integrity. Every time you choose... Every time you understand the implication of sacrifice, you need to know that whenever you choose, you are putting your integrity on the line. On the line. There is no, and the truth is that no one will be around to police you. Your dietitian, your doctor, your, will not be around to police you. Your best police in life is your personal integrity. Your best police in life is your personal integrity. In Tinyaya Kanese, Yeshe Daniel, Nya isi wo Daniel na brabo ma. Nya ma miensa ena yabo boso. Nye di kan eye devotion. Se otu ni hon si ho. Se obedi e radye chi. Nye ti biyara. Na eno ena ma Daniel. Bebi ya ofi ya se fi yi se oye abrante. Otu asuma ene ahenfo. Anay eye e juma. Kofem time o di more than 80. Personal devotion. Nia et also second one, any near um or yes or pe nya ope the choice. On one casa e ye na jing say em we no a be fimi mu he determined to make this choice. Enna or twa so ye ye. Nya tosu mi and san eye sacrifice say nya ube chu si biano a for rebu or bibi wa hai wasa wa shre. Ye mubi wa wa ye ye ya jin se a dear we minim se en ye mami. And so, me, 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 you now so send your measure choice when Tino. Oh, may I know one, two, Nami Jai, and I shall won't cry. Say, Nia, we and your choice and the way you are devoted to it and your sacrifice tells us something about your integrity. Integrity. And see, Nia, ye cano any Adriane Hunkwa. Now so send a woosie a dd, Adriane, I will pet time a wood dear Janino, and only training per buying our ye. This is really chicken, but we'll take a quick break and we will come back. We're looking at the Daniel diet on today's health arena. And this is not something that you should be listening to alone. Call a friend. Send somebody a message. Because there is something in there that will transform your life. If only you would let us get in there. Pastor Steve, before we went on the break, we were looking at how to deal with those excuses that come to us. And a typical one, I've been working my work schedule mm -hmm the way it is, mm. and that is the reason why I do what, what I, I do. do. But I know that this one is not good yeah. for me. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so for me, from this place, I should, uh, as we are saying, first make a choice. What do you want? No one can force you. No one can tell you do this necessarily. You need to make a choice. When you make the choice, know that there's a sacrifice. So the moment you make a choice, probably maybe a choice that I want to eat on time, or I want to avoid taking sugar drinks, or which are the, whichever example, when you make that choice, you are at work the next day, sugar drinks are brought to you, and you say, no, I'm not taking it. That is a sacrifice. Because sometimes it's giving free, or sometimes it's something that... But it's like giving is, free. The yeah, uh -huh, like something like Daniel, Daniel was, was given to you. Yeah. Yeah. But that's where 
integrity can be. Because you see, when I allow it to go today, it's sacrifice. But when next day they bring it, no, I'm not taking sugar drink. The next day, one week, two months, I'm not taking it. What you are doing is no more sacrifice. It's no more choice. It's personal integrity. It is at that point that you're able to elicit the people in your space to realize that this our lady doesn't take this drink and we don't need to. Usually, most people make choices, but they don't let their choice flow into sacrifice. And others also do not let their sacrifice flow into okay. personal integrity. So along the line, they get, they get uh, caved in and they alter the choices that they want to make. Wow. So there are levels. There are levels where hearing you, we start with a choice. choice yeah. Then as we persist in that choice, Do we have sacrifice. to sacrifice. And as Those we who, sacrifice, our personal, personal integrity, integrity is at stake. Yeah. And it becomes a habit. It becomes That's the thing. So a lifestyle. So Daniel teaches us that changes come by the little choices we make that we sustain through fast, uh, sacrifice and personal integrity. That is what develops character and ultimately develops the kind of future we want. So then little, little choices then becomes uh, the, the, the thing you need to look at. So for me, whatever decision you are making when it comes to your health or your diet, I really want you to come to a place, all of us, whether you are having a, a disease condition or not, you want to sit down at one point in your life to make a choice. What's going to be your diet? What's going to be your approach to diet? What are you going to allow for the next few months or years? And what does that mean in terms of sacrifice? When you make those decisions, step into those seasons where the sacrifices are needed and realize that the more you make that sacrifice, your personal integrity is what is happening. It's, it's being built on that particular distance. Because you see, what keeps a diet approach consistent to, with an individual? It's not even the workability of that diet plan. Mm. It's the personal integrity of that individual. And I've seen people who I start with them, they do so well. And I saw one of my clients, it's been seven years since we left. But when I saw her, I was amazed. Seven She's years down the line. down the line. Down the line and, and she tells me the things, the same things I told her. Seven, nothing has changed, nothing new. She's just consistent. And when I saw her, I couldn't even make her. She's so much transformed, looking well. And when we first met, her, her sugars, her pressures were all skyrocketed. So for years now, I'm fine. I'm doing my work. I'm getting the promotions in my workplace, and I'm enjoying my work with God. Wow. So what we're saying, viewers, is that this is possible. This is not just something that happened in the time of Daniel, but there are principles in there that we can apply to our lives. We have five principles to go. We've looked at three of them. Our devotion, our choices, and the sacrifices that goes with them. Yeah. So, Pastor Steve, what will be the next lesson so, that we we'll pick yeah, from I think Daniel's the fourth story? is actually what we just mentioned, personal, personal integrity. integrity. So personal integrity has two main dimensions, your agreement and your accountability. You don't develop sustainability or consistency if you don't take seriously your agreement. So when you agree to do something, hold yourself to that high standard. So usually when people come to my consulting, we are, we are talking, I tell them, I don't want to force you on this. So let's do what you can do. What we agree on and I put on paper is an agreement. Mm. That's what, that's what, so I will not be there, you will not be there, but that's where personal integrity, know the things you agree to do and the things you don't agree to do. You know, the things you cannot do, don't force yourself. But the things you've agreed that you want to do, hold yourself to that high standard. I told, I told myself, at 1.30, I'll break for lunch. Work is busy. And this work will always I mean. be busy. If you only think about the work, you'll miss a point. The point is that your personal integrity is at stake. Here, I made a, an agreement towards my health in this direction. I want to make that particular uh, uh, sacrifice at that moment. Agreement. Know that whatever you see, hold yourself to that high standard. That's the first thing. The second thing in personal integrity is accountability. You see, the accountability is important because sometimes, have you ever had this situation where you, you saw something online, you shop for it, I like this thing, and it was, it was you know, you, you requested you or you for paid it, it or yeah. it was brought, and when you saw it, it didn't look like, like what, what you saw. Uh, and in fact, they even told you some extra charges you need to pay, which 
was mm -hmm. not first told you. You realize it's not yeah, worth it. Yeah. Although you may take the gift, you learn, you never go back on that particular yeah. thing to do that again. Because it's something about agreement is breached. That's the same kind of thing you need to have with yourself. If I told myself I'll do this, you when the time comes, I want to be accountable for it. Then accountability also brings the reality of issues. Because sometimes, I told you I'll be here at 7, but I'm not able to make 7. Accountability suggests that, oh, way before 7, please, I'm going to mm. run late. I'll be a few minutes late. That tells me this person is accountable. He's holding his standards at that high level. So today I said, I'm not, I'm not taking a sugary drink. But today is a birthday. So please, this birthday, I'm going to okay. take this kind of thing. It's not like I'm breaking. Yeah. I'm making room and I'm being accountable. And sometimes probably you fell. You made a mistake. Oh, Charlie, this I said I will not do. This okay. happened. Bring yourself back I'm up. bringing myself back. This is wrong. I'm not going to uh, compromise on it. I think I missed the line on this. I'm going to hold back to the agreement, and this is not going to happen again. Without that, there will be no personal integrity, and there's no sustenance to any healthy life choice you want to make. So in making healthy life choices, our personal integrity is at stake. When we say we will do something, we need to keep ourselves to do that. Hold ourselves accountable. And I like the bit that you said that sometimes we would have to break whatever we have agreed to do for a particular so, reason. Exactly. But if that happens, we should also let ourselves know yeah. and agree that this is what I'm doing yeah. in for this history. time. Yeah. But you get back exactly. on track. You know, as, as we were saying this thing, this scripture in Ecclesiastes just comes to mind that God has no pleasure in fools. Yeah. Who will bow mm. and, and will not honor yeah. their vow. Yeah. And I see a similar thing yeah. being related yeah. here. So we are failing because we tell ourselves that we are going to do this. We don't do it. And we don't do it. Yeah. And the truth is that for most people, they are not holding themselves accountable. And they are not taking the agreement seriously. Whenever you agree on a, a health decision, <laughs> know what that, you know, know that means. And I think probably because we've not seen it in these slides. For, for most of us, in terms of this, that it's not about going for a therapy or going for some diet counseling. It's a test of it's your, test your integrity, of integrity and how you can hold how, yourself yeah. so accountable. No one forced you to come. You made this choice. This is what I want, and this is what I'm agreeing on. Well, there are people who have been talking about doing this diet and doing this diet, and oh, this diet doesn't work. This, this one is probably better, but after a few weeks, it doesn't work. Now, that is the reason why it didn't mm -hmm. work. You were not holding yourself accountable. You were not ready for the sacrifice. This is the hard truth. Yeah. So we've mentioned four, four of yeah. the things. Yeah. And what so would be then, our fifth Yeah, the fifth and there? probably when we begin to wrap up is this aspect that uh, you look at Daniel. There are two things I want to look, look at here. The first thing is the openness and flexibility of Daniel. Then the last one is the God factor because it ties all these things together. You know, Daniel wanted the custodian to give him this particular opportunity, but he, was, he wasn't pushing. Okay. He did it with humility and yeah. with respect. But I like that approach. He said, mm. let's try this for 10 days. Yeah. Let's give it a go for 10 days. If it works, fine. If it doesn't work, there's a certain level. Because I mean, people fail because they are not ready to give things a go. We are so that, that's that's really what we is. Mm. It, it, let, let's give it a let's go. Let's give it a go. I, I learned this principle from Daniel, and I actually use it in my practice a lot, especially when I'm introducing people to a certain diet plan uh, for a certain lifestyle change. I call it the 10 day principle. The 10 day principle, okay. I know you have challenge and reservation, no problem. Let's just give this thing a go for 10 days. Let's see how it goes. If it works, Ten we're going to sustain before. it. Right. If it doesn't work, We'll make modification. I like and that. We'll go forward, and that actually, as and you know, I tell my uh, my colleagues, your first ten days as a practitioner with your client is very important. Get your best results there, and even people who are looking for lifestyle change, so your first ten days very important. And really, for me, I learned it from Daniel here that listen, whatever you are not able to sustain within the first ten days, it will be struggle. difficult continuing with it. But if you can nail it well within your first 10 days, the chances 
are that you can continue to see the results you need in it. Wow. Give something Give a go. Your, your flexibility. So before, our time is really gone. I don't yeah. know where it yeah, really yeah, took. Yeah. But can we just narrow down on specifics that mm. Daniel requested yeah. that they should be given just herbs and water. Yeah. What is your take on it when it comes to the Daniel diet? Oh, well. <laughs> It got me there. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. But the point is this. In a dietetic circle, you could see Daniel's diet as like a vegan diet, okay. kind of a vegetarian diet. Daniel uh, abstained from meat, from wine, and all, or fats generally. Uh, Nutrition-wise, that's a very fantastic uh, uh, kind of uh, eating. And he also, what you saw that most of these things are natural foods, yeah. they are not processed food or yeah. very less processed food, they are whole foods, yeah, that's how we foods. call them. And we realize that the nutrition composition of those foods are usually kept intact, and the nourishing effect of these foods to your body is higher than when foods are processed. So, all these things give a plus to the Daniel fast uh, or the Daniel diet. And here also you realize that he was taking a lot of water and yeah. also that's also very Vegetables important. And, water. and that actually we cannot overemphasize the importance of water in one's health. But the point is this, there comes a point where somebody wants to go on a vegetable and water diet. Uh, the people that they are doing that long term as in, as in their whole life, life, others are doing it for a season, others really try it out once a while during the fast. I tell people, for, for people having certain health conditions for which sometimes they are not able to fast, it looks as if the Daniel fast gives a very good alternative. Okay. So Daniel was eating morning, afternoon, evening, but was not vegetables. eating certain things, just vegetables. So I've also had clients within our church space who wanted to go on a fast, but because of some medical conditions, mm -hmm. they wanted to see the best approach to help them. And in most instances, the Daniel approach has been very fantastic practically in helping people navigate through that because that is a very good way. But then the other issue more in terms of the bigger scope of uh, nutrition, can a person be on uh, the life. vegetable this thing for life? Well, there. in Daniel's case, we know that for the next three years, that was they continued. continued. Exactly. So then Daniel tells you that this was done within a certain, a certain period, period of time. So there's nothing wrong in blocking certain periods of your life to do something like that. It has very important nutrition and health benefits we cannot overemphasize. But if you want to do this for a whole life, you want to be a vegan, and I think it's a very big decision that you shouldn't do it lightly. Okay. You need to consult, get the right medical advice and diet advice because uh, there are certain things you can get in plants only. Mm. And there are certain things you can get in animal-based foods only. So you need to know how you are going to make those balances so that in the long term, it doesn't impact on your health negatively. Wow. So we've been looking at the five lessons, key lessons from the Daniel diet. And this last bit of looking at the practicality of it, that you can look at the time frame within which you try this diet. We are told that the initial 10 days, they saw results. They kept going, and at the end of the three years, they became those who were chosen because they looked better yeah. and more healthier yeah. because of this diet. Mm -hmm. I believe that you have learned a lot. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll give you our closing remarks on the Appreciate you for staying with us on this episode of the Health Arena. We have been looking at the Daniel diet. And before we finally wrap up, I just want to go back to the scripture we've been looking at again. Amazing scripture. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. But Daniel determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. He instead asked that they be tested for 10 days. And in verse 15, it says that 
at the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. Amazing stuff, mm -hmm. was Five big things for us to choose mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Our devotion, yeah. our choices, yes. mm -hmm. the sacrifice that comes with it, our personal so integrity, integrity, and being flexible when it mm -hmm. comes to these things. Yeah. What would be your final words to us? Well, probably the last one to wrap it all should be my final word. is the God factor. Mm. You look at Daniel carefully, realize that the selection to come to the king's house was by God. You look at the determination to go a certain way was because he had a relationship with God. You could even see that the favor he had before the custodian was because of God. Because really, in those days, people will not allow you to, you know, go that to way. go that way. But then also the outcome, like in practical nutrition sense, eating vegetable alone, if somebody's eating vegetable alone and somebody's eating meat and other foods, nutrition-wise, you expect increase in, in this other person than this. But you could see the place of the supernatural also here, that they said they became bigger, fatter. Yeah. That's the word the Bible yeah. used here. And looking much healthier nourished. than nourished than the other colleagues. You could see that in all these things and all the points that we've discussed today, a certain thread that goes through all this is the God factor. You cannot make significant change in your diet, in your health without the God factor. So having made a choice, bring it to God. When you are going through sacrifice, ask God for help. When it comes to the place of consistency and personal integrity, Cry on the grace of the Holy Spirit to help you. When you are afraid of giving something a go, ask for the help of God. And in all these things, acknowledge Him and you see significant progress in your health and in your diet. Wow. In all these things, the God factor is what makes the difference. So as a child of God, as you seek to improve upon your health, in your diet, in your choices, remember the Daniel feast, the Daniel type of um, food, and the God factor that comes with it. Pastor Steve, God richly bless you. Ming bagba ake yehuwa baha ogbe ekon koni osa oba chon osa oba jo ni wamba yehuwa dinjo mo keha oni chumo ni chumo ake ibaha ni oyano ni osheli. You are wondering what I'm saying. I'm just asking this blessing over his life. Thank you so much for staying with us. I believe that you have learned a lot. Of which please use it and make your life better. I want to say a big thank you to our TSC Media crew for bringing this show up all together. I also want to thank Lady Keswa Norte for providing my beautiful jewelry. To you who are watching, God continue to bless you as you journey with us on the health arena. Please feel free to contact us for sponsorship, for inquiries, and any questions using the number on your screen. Until we come your way again with another episode of The Health Arena, I've been your host, and my name is Helen Tetti. God bless you.